Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're regular here, you know by now I review many photographic, audio and video related products. And if you're new here, well, that's exactly what I do do. Now, today we're taking a second look at a, a fantastic product I bought oh, a couple of weeks ago. I've already done one review. There'll be a link up here somewhere uh, to the video. And it is of the Feel World. Here it is. The Feel World Live Pro L1. Um, live streaming mixer and video mixer. Now, I'm going to go through some of the things I found out about it since I've uh, been using it. Um, now, doing mixing live has its uh, drawbacks, and its only drawback for me is that if you make a you know a mistake, that goes live. That's it, you know. But that's the beauty of live uh, live productions, isn't it? Live broadcasting. The vision mixing is crucial, getting the vision mixing right. But of course, when you're working on your own, like I am, I don't have an individual that's doing the mixing. I'm have, having to do it myself. So um, if I get it wrong and hit the wrong button on the mixer, then, uh, you know, that's what goes out to where, as it were, and that's what will go out onto YouTube. Quickly go through the cameras. I know a lot of my audience are interested in what cameras I use. So angle one, we'll go to number one is the Sony a7C with the 85mm lens fitted. That's a great camera and a great lens. It's the f1.8 85mm lens. And angle two, which we'll go to, is uh, another one of my a7Cs. I've got two of them. So that's an a7C uh, with the Tamron 28 to 75mm lens. I'm actually recording uh, on that particular camera body purely as a backup for the audio. I've got the Sony BCM1, whatever it's called, microphone fitted to it. It's a digital Sony mic. Um, and I'm just uh, getting backup audio in case there's an issue with my Hollyland Lark 150, which is going directly into camera one, then being fed through the HDMI into the Live Pro 1, then into the Atomos Ninja 5. Um, angle three is my Sony A7R3, and that's picking up the computer screen. Um, and you can also see my Atomos Ninja 5, as I said earlier, uh, recording exactly what we're doing here. And then angle four, as we said earlier, is the ZV-1, uh, picking up the Live Pro L1 mixer. So now the reason why I'm doing this second video is because there was a, one or two quirks that I found with the Live Pro L1 when I'd done the first video. Firstly, was my fault and nobody else's. Um, I configured the inputs a bit cockeyed really. So I had camera angle one, I think into number two uh, uh, input. I mean, I had number four, you know, like the fourth angle as camera two. I had it basically all mixed up. So I didn't really, couldn't really remember what I was switching between. And um, I should have done really, because I've done vision mixing in the past. That's what I used to do. And I always made sure I had it set up in a, a logical configuration or I labeled the mixer. So really what I've got now is, uh, I haven't labeled the mixer, but I've got it set up in a, for me, a logical configuration. So angle one, which is camera one, is my close-up shot. Angle two, or function number two, is the wide shot that we saw. And then camera three is, it's a bit like C-roll, really, uh, B-roll, C-roll, whatever, is picking up the computer screen. And then channel four is basically this shot here, the overhead shot of the um, Live Pro L1 mixer. So I should be able to go between these channels without, you know, getting confused as to which one is doing what. So that was one thing, and that was uh, something I said in that video that I will get right the next time because I label them up correctly. Um, or if I don't label them, I'll have it in some sort of logical order. So I now know, like if I go into channel two, that'd be the wide shot. So, and there it is. Uh, that's the wide shot picking up from my Sony A7C. Um, and this is a great, great device. As I said before, I'm really enjoying it. Um, if you make a mistake, that does end up on the master video. Unless you've got uh, B-roll, you can, you know, cover it up with something else. And that is always, you know, possible to do. Now. What is great about this particular mixer, which I didn't do last time, is setting up a preview monitor. Now I've got set up um, a preview monitor, and if we go to camera three, which is basically this one, you can see here, now I've got set up um, the uh, bit of software called OBS. OBS, it's uh, threeware, you don't pay for it, it's a great, great bit of software, and you take USB 
out of the uh, LiPo L1 mixer uh, into your computer, and then you load up this software, and you've got you know, you've got your preview monitor, you've got your master output monitor, and along the bottom you've got your four camera, you've got your four camera inputs coming in. Or it could be, one of them could be a computer signal, but mine isn't. So you've got camera one, which is the tight shot, that one there. Then you've got camera two, which is the wider shot. Camera three, which is the, uh, well, basically the, the shot looking over my shoulder of a computer screen. And then the L, uh, L1 mixer there. So the great thing with this device, let's go back to number one. The great thing with this device um, you can set up the HDMI output and the uh, USB output to two different configurations. So I've got my HDMI set up to record into my Atomos Ninja 5. You can see there where it's recording to the Atomos Ninja 5. Now, I could have it the other way around and set that up as the preview, uh, as using HDMI as the preview out. So you're previewing it on a bigger screen. So that's always useful. And you can set the USB up the same way. You can either set the USB up to be preview out or master program out. Now, if you're doing live streaming, the, you would actually set up the HDM, uh, sorry, the USB as your master program out because obviously you're live streaming. So that's what you would do um, because you would want the master program out to go via USB into your computer. But if you like myself, I'm not live streaming, so I want my master output to go out via HDMI into my Atomos Ninja 5. So I've set the HDMI out as the master out um, and the USB 3 out as preview out. And you can do either way around. I mean, that's great. That's so, so flexible. Um, I mean, obviously you've got your four HDMI inputs. Now, also you've got your audio bars. If you see here, let's go back to this angle here. You can see the audio bars on uh, the um, screen here. So you can clearly see a really good quality audio going out on the master out. Now, for me today, that's coming, coming through on HDMI 1, which is uh, basically, you know, this signal here, which is feeding the master audio out into the LiPo L1. And that's what you're hearing. And it's coming from my... Uh, Hollyland Lock 150 uh, radio microphones, wireless microphones, whatever you want to call them. Um, and, you know, it's really, really good microphone kit. I will be testing the uh, Rode Wireless Go 2 system uh, very shortly. Um, I've got them charging up at the moment, so uh, we'll be testing those at some point, some point today. Um, now, uh, this mixer is, you know, really, really useful. And I'm really enjoying using it, as I said before. Um, I don't actually do live streaming per se, but I am going to experiment with some live streaming. But what I have found that it is great for is uh, either Skype and also, believe it or not, for uh, FaceTime. And I didn't think it would because external cameras don't seem to work with FaceTime, but this unit does. And what's happening is the computer, um, if we go back to that, the computer is reading the signal as a webcam, but a HD 1080 signal going into it, HD webcam. So of course, when you load up FaceTime, it's actually just seeing it as a, um, as a webcam, which is great. So you've got much better quality images if you're using Zoom, if you're using FaceTime, certainly Skype, um, and obviously OBS, which is what I've got it set up here with. Um, so very, again, very, very flexible piece of kit because webcams are pretty crap, aren't they? You've got no depth of field. Uh, the sharpness isn't very good. The color's not very good. But when you're using proper cameras like, you know, like I'm using, you get, the, the, you know, the person on the other end sees a lovely picture and it's really, really good. I've also found using OBS that the uh, quality is pretty good for recording because you can set OBS up uh, for recording. If we look at, this is OBS now. What I also like about OBS, you've got lovely audio display here. So you can clearly see the audio levels as well as actually on this display here. So, you know, either or. But you can set OBS up for recording um, as well as live streaming. And I have done a test recording and it seemed pretty good. But I prefer to record to my Atomos 
simply because I know that is going to record a really, really good video signal. Um, now, the other thing with uh, this particular mixer is I did discover that it is out of sync by six frames. So when you're in the edit, you have to move the uh, audio, you have to detach the audio from the video and move it along six frames. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate how you do that simply because I use Final Cut Pro, but you guys and girls may well be using uh, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, Adobe Premiere Elements, uh, 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 Vegas, whatever. There's a whole list. I'm sure I missed one somewhere along the line. Um, I, uh, iMovie. So, you know, you're all going to be using different bits of software and the, you know, the way you do it is going to be different according to what software you're using. But effectively, you do need to move the audio clip along six frames. Once you've done that, it's perfect. I've not had an issue with it. It's been absolutely perfect sync, lovely jubbly. Um, now, there may be a method in the uh, menu setup of this device for um, setting up the, uh, you know, the sync. But I, I've been through the menu and I can't find it. So um, if anyone does know how to uh, set the audio sync up so, it's, so it drifts it, you know, six frames or moves it six frames, that would be really, really helpful. Um, I don't use any of the fancy things. It's got dissolves and wipes and all that sort of thing. I use it for straight cutting. Although I am using the T-bar, what I do, I basically pre-select what channel I want to go to. So on this occasion, I'm going to go to channel one, which is the main camera. Uh, channel two is flashing at the moment, but well, that's what it will go to if I don't change it. So I'm going to select channel one. That's starting to flash now. So when I go to that, it now goes to channel one, which is obviously my master master camera. Um, so that's basically the Feel, Feel World Live Pro L1 mixer. Uh, great, great device. Um, as I say, the only downside is that if you make a mistake, that's what ends up, you know, uh, on your master program. But I mean, that's not a big deal, really, is it? Uh, people kind of expect that if you're doing a live production. I'm not so sure they expect that if you're doing, like I do, a pre-recorded production. But as I said in my first review, it saves me a lot of hard drive space by loading all these memory cards onto the computer. They're all 4K, so you end up with a massive amount of storage space you need to store all the original footage. With this, it's one master file straight on the computer, edit, top and tail it, graphics and whatever, and, you know, job's done. So there we go. I hope you found that useful. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and hit the like button if you like the content of my videos. I really, really appreciate that. I'm getting some great comments and some great feedback and that's great. It helps me grow the channel and I really enjoy that. So thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography. Cheers for now. Bye.